we got W by L of 3, 4 and W by L of 1, 2. So, in the design, what is remaining is M5 and M8. So, M5 we are finding from input common mode range minimum. So, minimum input common mode range is common mode voltage ICMR minimum equals uh, the specification is given as 0.8 volt. So we have M1 here, you see we in minimum, then M5 we have. So we know 25 micrograms flowing through M1, so there will be one VGS here and the VDS, VD set of M5. So this V in should supply voltage of VGS of M1 plus this VD set. V in minimum is given as 0.8. It should be greater than VGS1 plus VD set of 5. So VGS1 we have to find. We have ID1 we have and GM1 uh, also no no okay WBL ratio also is known. So ID equals mu COX WBL into VGS minus 50 whole square by 2. ID is 25 micro. So this can be written as 25 micro equals 300 micro by 2 into W by L ratio is 7 VGS minus VT we take it as uh, around 0.5 whole square. set is remaining 0.8 should be greater than this VGS minus plus VD set 5. So VD set uh, what we have should be less than 0.2 so approximate value 0.2. Now we have ID of most M5 VD set of M5 also we have. So now we can calculate the WBL ratio for that. So for that ID5 is 50 micro that equals mu and COX into WBL into VD set is 0 0.2 whole square by 2. After calculation, 50 micro into 2 divided by 300 micro So 
So take W by L of 5 equals 9. So till now we have W by L of 3, 4 equal to 84. W by L of 1, 2 equal to 7. W by L of 5 equals 9. So this W L of 5 we can use for 8 also because it is just a current mirror. Same current is flowing through M8 and M5. So this we can take as identical. So now we go to simulation and see with these uh, values how much gain we are getting. How much gain bandwidth we are getting. Accordingly we will, we will make some tuning so that we will get the required gain. So I don't think that we will get 40 dB here because with a single stage design it is difficult to get 40 dB but more than 30 dB is good enough. So we have to add one more stage to make an op amp. Anyway we will do the simulation and find uh, what we our design is correct or not. So this is the total circuit we have. This is the VDD and this current is I0 which is 50 microampere and uh, load, load capacitor CL is 10 pico and all the MOSFETs are sized according to our calculation. For example this is uh, okay. This was 84 when we calculated. This is 84. This one also 84. This was 7. This also 7. This we got 9 mm. We put this also. First make sure that uh, the swing limits are correct. Swing means input common mode voltage. So initially we will take the one of the uppermost case. It is, it is given as 1.6 volt. So if you are giving 1.6 volt in the DC value in both the input, all the MOSFET should be in saturation. Okay. Then even if we give a small signal above this DC value, then all this MOSFET will be in saturation. Then we have to give the minimum value that is that is 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is given as the minimum input common mode voltage. Still, all this MOSFET should be in saturation. So to make the things easy, uh, I made this component display settings. You can go to edit component display. And for the MOSFET, you can take region. You can take any value. I put region because it is easy for us to find whether the MOSFET is in saturation or not. Okay. Uh, initially, we put the DC analysis. Save DC operating point. Okay. Run the sim. Our common input voltage is 1.6 volt to both the MOSFET. So it is in region 2. Region 2 means it is in saturation. Region 0 is cut off. Region 1 is linear. 
region 2 is saturation region 3 is subthreshold okay then this MOSFET is in region 2 this MOSFET also region 2 so all the MOSFETs are region 2 that means upper uh, input common rod voltage is okay we have we, there is no problem in this now we put 0.8 volt here okay Check and save. Run the sim. Okay, now also you can see that all the MOSFETs are in saturation. So we are in safe operating region. Now we check about the GM. We calculated the GM for M1 and M2. We calculated the GM around. Uh, how much was the value? Uh, we calculated GM as 314 314 micro but it is very less than what we calculated it is only around 200 micro so we have to increase the GM so the, otherwise the gain bandwidth product will be less so let us check let us do the simulation first and find out the gain bandwidth product now. For that, AC analysis frequency starting point 1, this is 0 to 10 megahertz, it will run. Then, for this input, any one of the input, we give a AC, volt, AC voltage max as 1 volt. Okay. Check and save. Uh, select this, run the sim. Okay. <coughs> Results, direct plot, AC gain and phase. So this is the output, this is the input. From this plot, you can see that uh, how much is the gain bandwidth plot now? Give one minute, it's better to plot just the gain. You can remove the face information. direct plot yes, CDP20 since we gave input voltage 1 volt output voltage means mm -hmm. it's gain because V0 by V in V in is 1 volt so V0 means the gain So it is causing 0 dB around 3 megahertz. So this is very below what we designed for. We designed for 5 megahertz. So it is coming only 3 megahertz. Why this is happening? Uh, this is because of the GM. GM is now only 188.6. You can cal calculate this exactly like see 188.6 micro divided by CL is 10 PF. Then divided by 2 pi. 
you will get gain uh, gain bandwidth product as 3 megahertz so to increase that you have to increase the gm so how you will increase the gm gm is uh, depend on the w by l ratio of m this m1 and m2 these two mosfets so we have to increase the w of these two mosfets oh okay okay we made a mistake here it is uh, okay the length should be 1 micrometer i made a mistake there here also okay one micro okay let's run the sim again Still, all the MOSFETs are in saturation only, but the GM has increased a lot. It is now 266, but it is not good enough because we designed for 316. So, we have to increase the W again. So, let's put uh, 10 micro here. Okay. can save run the same ok now let's check uh, all the MOSFETs are in saturation region yes all the MOSFETs are in saturation region ok the GM has increased to 310 it is near to our design we designed for 314 so if it is 310 Now first check all the MOSFETs are in saturation, yes all the MOSFETs are in saturation, we are safe. And the GM has increased to 310 now, we designed for 314, okay let it be 310, we will be getting the close result. Okay let's check that 310.7 micro divided by 2 pi into 10 pf. So it is around 4.94 giga megahertz. So let's see we are whether we are getting it or not. Result direct plot ACDB20. So now, see the gain is closing 0 dB around, around 5, you can say 4.7 or 4.8. So this is approximately uh, very close to what we designed. We designed for 5 megahertz, but 4.8 or 4.9 is fine for us. But the problem is that, okay, uh, we designed for a gain of 40 dB. So we got the gain bandwidth product approximately what we expected, but gain is little bit less. We designed for a gain of 40 dB, but it's around 35 or something. If we play around with MOSFETs, you can increase the gain little bit but you cannot reach 40 dB. So how we will tune all these MOSFETs that I will cover in the next video in, when we design this two stage of amp. So now we design these uh, basic things and okay let's do, so we did the DC analysis, we did the AC analysis and found the gain on this. Okay let's do one uh, transient analysis also.
uh, okay we need a voltage v sine voltage source amplitude of 100 micro amplitude of 100 micro frequency of 100 kilohertz okay Let's run a transient simulation. Uh, we put the frequency as uh, 100 kilohertz. That means the time period will be 10 micro. Okay, let's run for 100 micro. So now we are plotting the input voltage and the output voltage. Okay, it's only input voltage. Okay, let's plot them together. So direct plot, transient signal. So you can see input is a 100 micro volt, it is on 0.8 volt. This is the output voltage, you can see it is amplified much. How it is, what is the exact value we will find out now. Okay, this is the input voltage V in P and this is the output voltage. You can see the input voltage is varying from 799.9 millivolt to 800.1 millivolt. Now, but here it is varying from a pretty much large value. If you check this, it will be around, we got 30 dB. 30 dB means 20 log 100 is volt. So, it is less than 100. It is around eighty. Okay, so it is amplification is around 80. 80 times the output. If you, if you want, you can check the amplitude of these two waveforms. So you can then you can check the peak to peak value. I'm not finding the exact peak to peak value now. Uh, you can check it with your simulator. So anyway, it is amplifying the ampli and the gain is around uh, 80. See how we, okay, one more thing that I forgot to say, how we selected, this is the input negative or this is the input positive, how we select this? So there is no such rule that one, it is negative, it is positive. So see, this part, this part is basically a common source amplifier. So when we increase the voltage here, 
I mean, I'm saying when we are increasing the small signal voltage here, the small signal voltage in the train will decrease. So from this point, so we know that the uh, gain of a common source amplifier is negative. So this is a common source amplifier part. So if we increase this part, voltage across across in this output node will decrease. I'm saying about the small signal voltage. So this is the input voltage. So this is the negative terminal. So if we have one more stage, then these terminals will vary. So in detail, we will dis discuss it uh, when we discuss the two-stage amplifier. Okay. So as the time being, uh, we designed a differential amplifier, and we know all these steps how to design these MOSFETs or the WL band ratio. Okay. In the next video, we will design this two-stage amplifier. Okay. Bye.